Keith, thanks for joining me this morning. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions before the panel that you're taking part in next week at WTM. Keith, it's exciting to have the announcement from Airbus about the development of um, essentially carbon-free flying at some point in the future. Do you want to just outline for us where Airbus is at in terms of the vision of what you hope to be delivering by 2035? Yeah, great. Thank you, uh, Harold, for this opportunity. Um, the announcement which we had a few weeks ago uh, was uh, the vision to to deliver an entry into service around 2035 for hydrogen powered aircraft. Um, the hydrogen story uh, is quite complex as it covers a number of different uh, markets. Uh, we see hydrogen as an opportunity from the smallest to the largest aircraft um, with uh, hydrogen fuel cells for commuter and short range with uh, for the sort of the shorter range to medium range aircraft using hydrogen burn and then for the long range um, power to liquid each having an element of hydrogen however in order to get to the power to liquid for the long range we would we would you know we desperately need to see the development of the sustainable fuels industry in the UK using renewable sources to develop more fuels and at a greater percentage and also greater volumes at, a, at the right price. So there's so there's great opportunity and uh, in on the 4th of February this year, uh, seems seems like a long time ago now uh, with what's happened, but 4th of February this year, the UK industry announced a net zero target, uh, including um, uh, uh, 20, by 2050 that we would be net zero carbon. Um, and this would include the whole spectrum of opportunities right the way from new innovation, which we're mentioning hydrogen, uh, sustainable fuels, um, and uh, you know, optimized um, air aircraft routing. So there's a great challenge for us, but a great opportunity and hydrogen will play a part uh, in that. And we see a great future for hydrogen for the for the short to mid range aircraft. And if I remember rightly, Keith, you, the Airbus announced three different concepts for what the the hydrogen powered flights would look like. Which do you think is likely to be delivered first? Do you have any idea at this stage, or is it still very much in the development phase? Well, it is very much in the development phase, and I don't think uh, I think each of the concepts has different opportunities and different challenges. Um, and each one of them, we're going to be learning through the development phase, learning hydrogen powered flight, how we handle the hydrogen, uh, where it's stored, how we how we refuel uh, right across the whole piece. So uh, no one of them has a specific uh, a, a bias. We are focused on all three with the intention of uh, looking at what the, the first opportunity will be in the next few years when we do, when we look at the technology readiness levels. I assume, Keith, from what you're saying, that, that one, of the, one of the things which will determine which plane emerges in 2035 will be Airbus's assessment of the different challenges and which ones the various people you have to work with to address those challenges, which ones they are going to successfully address. So perhaps it's just worth reflecting, if you would, on what the major challenges are. I can think of some pretty obvious ones. I mean, obviously, the supply of the fuel is a very big issue. And price must be an issue as well, but I assume there are other challenges as well. Yeah, you, you're quite right when you talk about uh, infrastructure. And so in parallel to the development of the aircraft, we need to see that infrastructure being developed at an airport level. Um, and the, the intention is then that uh, the, that infrastructure will be matured to a place that when we enter into service, the hydrogen is then available for use. Um, However, obviously, in order to, to manufacture the hydrogen, we need to see a significant increase in the generation of yeah. renewable electricity. Um, and the UK government has done a great job so far when it comes to offshore wind, but we're going to need to see a much greater uptake of offshore wind, and we need to see a decarbonising of the, the, the grid in order to get to a place whereby we can produce a renewable hydrogen, and whether that is then used to produce power to liquid through carbon capture storage, um, uh, or whether it's uh, used to produce liquid hydrogen 
for burn or, or hydrogen fuel cells, that the hydrogen itself will be required in, uh, in all modes. So, I mean, that's one of the big challenges. Uh, obviously, hydrogen flight is another challenge and the learnings that we're going to, to get from that, uh, how we, how we uh, store the hydrogen on the aircraft um, and uh, the use phase um, and then the impact. So all these things are, are areas in which we, we, you know, we need to learn and understand to, and to develop. But we believe that each one of them is, is achievable and each one of them is understandable and we'll be able to move forward for a successful entry into service around 2035. What do you think is going to be the environmental benefit, Keith? Well, first and foremost, the environmental benefit is we're going to, going to be flying without producing any carbon. So we need to have a end-to-end -end carbon free uh, structure uh, where it comes. So the fuel itself is with renewable electricity. The, the, few, the, the hydrogen itself is produced in a sustainable way without emitting carbon. And then uh, when we're using the hydrogen in flight, we won't be producing carbon. Now we know that carbon dioxide uh, from our aviation is around about um, between two, two and a half percent of man-made carbon. So relatively small, but potentially growing because the industry Will be growing so we're going to see a significant reduction in the amount of carbon generated um, also some we believe some non-co2 impacts will be reduced as well because you won't have the the particles that come from conventional kerosene which are then uh, which then you, you see contrails being formed from uh, the challenge so we won't have greenhouse gases in in any in the same vein as we see from conventional flight so we, we believe that there's going to be a reduction both in, in CO2 and in non-CO2 impact. Keith, we're really looking forward to that panel next week. As, as you'll know, we've got yourself from Airbus. We've also got Jason Cure, who's one of the founders of Universal Hydrogen on the supply side. And of course, Matt Gorman from Heathrow talking about the way in which the infrastructure at an airport will have to change. It's a complex issue, isn't it, to change the whole way an industry works? Can't, it's not something Airbus can do on its own. So I think there's an opportunity next week in that panel to begin to discuss some of those interactions. Uh, absolutely, and I think uh, right from the start, Airbus has been very clear that that we're going to need significant collaboration right across the industry and also outside of the industry in order to make this happen. But we're completely committed as a company to zero emissions flight. We completely committed to reducing uh, as low as practically possible to uh, our climate impact because we believe that we want to have a sustainable future for the industry for our industry and for the future generations to fly uh, and enjoy the benefits that we are able to enjoy ourselves thanks